Hello there folks, today we're taking a look at the game called Liberatoris, the conspiracy to liberate Rome. It's published by Moideas Game Design and the designer is Jan Yegorov. So in this game you are having those hidden agendas and you either play a, an agent or Republicans. And the theme is about the Caesar is becoming too powerful and then Republicans form that kind of a secret uh, society called Liberatoris and they want to basically kill Caesar. But Caesar kind of knew about that, so he sends his agent out in order to um, break some havoc in the, in the Republican side and still stay on a throne. But amongst the Liberatoris, there's, there's also the one who wants to become a new Caesar. They don't know that. They want to kill Caesar, but they don't know that will be, there will be a new ruler coming up, probably. So, a game about hidden agendas. Let's take a look at how it works. Liberatoris is a hidden agenda game where each one of you will be assigned one of the roles. There is competitor, agent, and Republican. And the game itself is simple. On your turn you do one action, one of three actions, and then the turn goes to the other player, but you have some you can have some extra actions as well, like three actions on your turn. So at the beginning, first of all, there will be a certain amount of let's let's say if we play a four player game, there should be an agent, competitor, and two republicans. And competitor is kinda on the team of with the Republicans, but he wants to win alone, kinda a traitor within the Republicans and agent is on Caesar's side. Republicans want to overthrow Caesar. So each one of you will be assigned this hidden role. You look at this role and then you start and each role has a different winning condition. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but I want to talk about the game itself. So here we put this influence token as well. So on your turn, you basically manipulate cards, so you, you, you uh, manipulate cards towards Caesar, towards uh, Liberatoris, or buy them for yourself or for your opponents. So what do you do? On your turn, you can, f first of all, put the cards and influence Caesar. So it should be only the rightmost card with that extra border. Uh, the red border right there. So when you influence Caesar, then you put the card up here, and that means that this number is the influence the Caesar will go, uh, the, the marker will go towards Caesar. So one, two, three it will go towards Caesar. That's one of the things you can do. Another thing you can bribe, when you bribe, and this is good for Liberatoris side, so for example, if if it goes to Caesar's side, it's good for the agent. If the influence goes towards Libertor, it's good for, uh, for Republicans and competitor. So you can pay this cost on the card, and you can then buy any card and put it on that side and move it that many spaces towards the blue side. So there's nothing really, uh, let's say, difficult about that. The third option you can do, you can buy a card. When you buy a card, you pay the cost down here, and you get this card as a special ability. So the, the yellow cards are basically one time used, they come, they, their ability activates immediately. So for example here, when you get this card, take a courier and an informer from the supply and give them to one or two players. And these are two small cards right here. I'm gonna talk about them in a moment. Some abilities are activated whenever they activate it. Say whenever your neighbors endorse a citizen to Caesar, which means like basically influence Caesar, that way you will get one dollar. So that's, that's really easy. So this is one of the three actions you do. And let's now, first of all, talk about what those winning conditions are, what, what we're trying to do, why you need to endorse the citizen to Caesar, why agent needs to do that, why liberators want to have influence on their side, of course it's quite obvious, and why you need to um, get cards for yourself as well with some special abilities. And by the way, when you buy cards uh, with 
that third option you can either get them to yourself or give them to another player because some cards aren't the best for example the cards with a little bit reddish uh, background here are rather bad so you want to buy them for other players so but let's talk about the roles so the agent his goal is to save caesar by preventing liberatoris from getting more influence than caesar that's easy but while the deck is still here if you will get to 15 influence on Caesar's side, the agent wins automatically. So, if, if the agent will get influence to 15 on the Caesar's side, he wins. Otherwise, if the deck runs out, this card as the day of action comes up, then first of all, three new cards will come up, Brutus, Mark Antonius and Cassius will come up. There's a double sided and give you some special abilities. And then agent cannot automatically win by getting 15 influence, uh, but he will most, most likely win. But then he must still have more influence than uh, Libertores. Then he will win. Republican, his goal or her goal is to kill Caesar and prevent the competitor from getting more influence personal influence than you and any other Republicans. So, Republicans win if they have more influence on their side. But within them, there is a competitor. And if he or she has more personal influence, this personal influence tokens, than any other Republican, then a lone winner right here. Otherwise, Republicans win as a team. So, that's, these are the goals right here. And uh, what I wanted to, uh, to show you is that sometimes you will get some personal influence right here. And then you have some abilities. For example, when you endorse a citizen uh, to a Caesar, uh, then you can activate as many red abilities as you have in your tableau. Um, also, you have three action. You may hire with the wife action. You may hire a servant during your turn. They cost two. The servants are basically like that. So the courier, you give one influence to the side you belong to at the end of the game. So the courier is good for the agent because if he accumulates his personal influence, he can give it to Caesar with those cards in order to influence towards Caesar even more and most likely win the game. For Liberatoris is the same. So if, if you have this card, you have to give up your influence which is usually good, but sometimes it's not, because if you give out all your, all your influence and competitor was really smart and he has more, then he will win. And this informer says, if you are the agent, Liberatoris will get two influence from the supply at the end of the game. So two influence will go to that side if, if the agent has informer. So these are some extra cards that can influence. So you usually want to buy them to other players and not for yourself. Kind of trying to bust agent and drain uh, the influence from other players. And that's basically the whole game. You're trying to survive, kind of. Uh, for, for the agent, you try to get the most influence early. And then... If not, then still trying to get the most influence and trying to mess with those cards and give them to the others or for yourself for special abilities and trying to win the game. And that's how Liberatoris works. I also wanted to show you some of the cards that are in this game. For example, Preter. You may hire a citizen from another player by discarding Preter and paying the player's the citizen's hiring cost. So, and it activates only if you endorse the citizen. So you give influence to Caesar, then you can activate red abilities. So for example, this is whenever you endorse a citizen to Caesar, you get $2 and give one influence to another player. Or here, recruiter, when you get this card, okay, this, this we talked about, or this is a bad card. You can use wife or pincerna, which is basically the wife's abilities to get couriers and informers. Discard Lena when you bribe a citizen to Liberatoris. So this is a bat, so you want to give this to another player. You may pay $3 to get one influence. And this is the same, the same. <laughs> They're not shuffled really well right now. When you get this card, take one influence from another player. This is veteran, which is really cool. And there are all sorts of cool different cards. 
There is also somewhere the Cleopatra, which is a promo. Whenever you endorse the citizen to Caesar, you take courier from the supply and give it to another player. So there are lots of different cards and that's it. So what do I think about Liberatoris? Um, first of all, I want to mention components as always. I like the art of the game. I like the box cover. Um, I like the theme itself as well. Ancient Rome, whatever. So I like that stuff usually. Um, and yeah, components are good. They're fine quality. Especially I like the art as, as I already mentioned. Now, if we go towards the mechanics, first of all, I'm not a person who likes hidden agenda games usually. I tend not to like them, but I really wanted to try this one uh, for the reason that I like more ideas, game design uh, games, for example, Mini Rails or Flow of History. Um, I like those games so far, Tulip Bubble as well. So I was curious about their new design, new title. So, and let's go um, deeper into the mechanics. So uh, this is a hidden agenda game where you have those different roles. Uh, what I like about this one is that within, there are two sides, the Caesar side and the Republican side. And within that Republican side, there's a competitor and he's, he's like a traitor. Uh, although he needs Republicans to win in order to win himself, but he needs to be really careful not to give away the influence. And, and there's a caveat now with, with the, uh, with the game and with the hidden agenda is that and this is the problem I have with all of those hidden agenda games is that you can start bashing your opponents for for no reason so here as as well like your some those courier cards and those informer cards um, are rather the ones that you want to buy and give to your opponents so they will give up their influence and if there is an agent uh, then the, and you're a Republican, then you can mess with the agent, but you don't know really, and that's the problem. So you're kind of buying cards for yourself and for the others, and kind of giving those cards to the others, not really knowing what they are, and although you, you want to uh, deduct who is uh, the agent, who is the, the, the Republican, but the biggest problem is that within the... Republicans who is the competitor and okay I wouldn't say it's a problem of the game it's maybe my own problem uh, that I have is that I kind of think about what should I uh, who should I play the card to and what should I do and how can I basically understand who is the competitor I can clearly understand who is agent at some point because the agent is the only one who works for Caesar which I also feel like being alone, playing an agent is at the start is really uh, difficult because you don't know how to bluff in this game yet. So uh, that's, that's that. This is the hidden agenda type of game where it balances out. And of course, uh, as I told, it's not a negative that I talk about those when you give out those cards and give out them randomly. It's like in the bank, the dice game when you just punch people and see who reacts to what. So here as well, kinda, uh, but it balances out as when you give those cards out, let's say there is that courier card which um, takes away personal influence from you to give it to your side, to Republicans or Caesar, which is usually good for the agent. For the agents, it's a perfect card. So it can balance out that you're giving the courier to another player thinking that he's the competitor, so you want to drain him from the influence and you still want to win a Republican, but eventually you gave this card to the agent who will use his influence in order to influence Caesar even more and probably win the game. So there's that. And, but on the other hand, you can give uh, an agent the, the informer card, which will screw with the agent, but you might give it to the player who is not the agent and this is just a waste of uh, a free action. And where it balances out, what I want to say is that uh, when you give out those cards, they can be good or bad for each of the sides. And you don't really know. And that's what I like. It's not only bad. It's good and bad. And you can kind of see maybe who is competitor at some point when he gathers a lot of influence. Or maybe sometimes it's just 
the cars he bought. That's where he got the most influence. And you as Republicans want to get more influence as well because you as Republicans, if you get those courier cards, you will give out your personal influence to Liberatore's side, which is basically the, the overall influence, but you will be nothing left with. So there is that, there is that kind of twist of mind in this game. And um, if we talk about the length of the game, where I would say the hidden agenda of the game is easy, it can... Now, uh, when you play the first, it can overstay its welcome, it can be wonky, it can be weird, you don't really understand how to think in this game, why I'm buying those cards and why, I'm, why when I'm buying them, why should I give them to another player? I'd rather take them for myself. Um, so there's, there's that. Uh, but eventually, as you play more, you understand the depth of the game. Yeah, because it's a hidden agenda, you need to understand the different roles and how to bluff in this game. This is really important. And then the game will become faster because also uh, there are cards, a lot of cards, and all the cards have that text on them. So you kind of want to memorize those cards through different plays in order to play the game much faster. And if the game, if you play it a few times, uh, then the game will become much faster and will become more appealing. Uh, as for the first play, be careful that it can drag out. Uh, it can be like 60 or over 60 minutes. And it, the box says 40 to 60 minutes. I would say it can be 40 minutes if you are familiar with the game, familiar with the cards. So yeah, this is, this, this is another game which is three to six players uh, where you cannot play it with two players, but hidden agendas, come on play with more people and I think that you should play this game like playing this game with three people no no it's the hidden agenda games are better with more players and it is for example with six players you have two competitors which is really really cool because amongst the two competitors if they have a tie in personal influence at the end of the game none of them wins and republicans win instead so the the, the competitors between the cell the competitor in a six player game must get more influence than Republicans and must get more influence than another competitor, which is like, it's a cool twist. I think the game shines with, uh, with four, it's, it's fine. The game shines with five or six uh, people. And once you get used to this game, it's not that difficult. So these are my thoughts about, there's not much to say about this game. I like it. Um, I will give it a uh, bronze virtual medal. Uh, for the for this appeal for this kind of a small twist into the hidden agenda and cool art and cool theme so this is liberatoris the conspiracy to liberate rome see you next time folks this channel is sponsored by osprey games check them out at ospreypublishing.com